Take your time. Let's get going, man. We're gonna wait. Huh? Are you ready? What's going on? Again, things that we don't quite understand the the significance of yet. It's an ancient custom. People leaving the island pray here for a safe trip. Chapu didn't pray that day. Said he'd miss his boat. Well, considering that he kind of disobeyed all of the laws of Yevon and just ran into the cloister of trials. He'd probably pray here just to kind of make Waka happy, I think. He did kind of give him his brother's sword. Good man. That should do it. Okay, we're ready to roll. Let me just save here. Because we have a mini boss battle coming up. So again, um, I think I remember what Final Fantasy VII what, of what I was playing. I mean, if you equip someone with a materia, they can do quite a bit of magic damage. So you can have, you know, pretty much any character using magic. But the way Final Fantasy X has done it at the moment, Yuna, um, Lulu is the only person that has access to black magic, and it will be that way for a long time. So this again is nice because at the end of the day, there are going to be fiends where you're going to need to use Lulu, and I think. For the kind of first portion of the game, she is one of the, the characters that can deal the most damage. So she has very interesting stats. She's extremely slow, so she gets quite, you know, she doesn't get very many turns. She has very low HP. Uh, obviously strength is low, that's, that's a given. But some of her stats are extremely high, like evasion, for example, is 40. And that's going to continue to grow. She's going to, I think she definitely has the highest evasion of all of the characters. Her magic defense is very good as well. So she's, uh, she's an interesting mix of, um, of abilities and she'll definitely be useful early on in the game. Now, as you can see, Yuna and Lulu's magic stat is the same. And to be honest, they're fairly similar, but Yuna has much more agility. Uh, she can get much more turns in and she has more HP as well, which is cool. But obviously, you know, it shouldn't come as a surprise that Yuna is the white magic specialist and she's going to gain a lot of white magic abilities. Now, what I will do is I will not teach, you will have the option of teaching Yuna some, uh, some black magic later on in the game. You know, not post game, but later on in the game. And I will not teach Yuna black magic because when that happens, basically Lulu starts to become redundant. Because if Yuna knows black magic as well, then she becomes, you know, too formidable. And because of her higher agility as well, you pretty much don't really need Lulu in the team. So in order to, to keep things balanced and to make sure that everyone you know, has their own role, I will, I will refrain from uh, teaching Yuna black magic. Okay, let's move on. Okay, um, the eagle-eyed the eagle -eyed amongst you will notice a save sphere up top there. Well, two actually, if you're even more eagle-eyed. And those are inaccessible right now. And it's going to be a long time until we can access those. And also here, it actually says Kilika and Beaconel join as one. And again, you will have no idea what that means if it's your first time playing this game. But maybe, I guess, remember that one for, for later on. Okay, tough guy. I mean, I think he's he's kind of overreacting here. At the end of the day, we, we came into the Cloister of Trials. You know, we've been hanging out in the same village for one night. I don't know why he'd decide to attack me now, but... Q. 
Okay. I'll have to fuck this guy up. Again, not nothing of any significance here. Although that is a pretty sweet attack. Come on, I don't want to have to heal. That's enough. What's with that guy? Kimari Ronso, of the Ronso tribe. He's learned the fiend's way of fighting. That's not what I meant. He's another Yuna's guardian. Huh? <laughs> Sometimes we don't understand him either. Kimari doesn't talk much anyway. Mm. But he has protected me since I was a child. Hmm. Huh. Okay, so that's Kimari Ronso. He still hasn't joined the party yet, but trust me, he will. And what I will say is that Kimari is actually one of my favourite characters. He's a, he's a bit of an enigma when it comes to the Sphere Grid, but in terms of story development, I mean, I would like you to remember the, the first encounter that we've had with Kimari here, and kind of what he's like towards the end of the game, and see... You see that treasure chest up there, we're not going to be able to get that as well. But Kimari comes a hell of a long way, and I find him to be a very interesting character. He's actually one of the, the better looking um, characters as well. His um, his visual upgrade was, was done pretty well too. Because he doesn't have a human face, it's, it might be a bit different, I don't know. A flyer! That's your department, right? True, true, but, uh, why don't we let our summoner show us what she's made of? <laughs> yeah, that's a smart move. Okay, let's see what the summoner can do. Your first real battle. Let's see some style. Show us what your training has taught you, Yuna. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys, let's summon our first Aeon. And they all have nice, slick uh, intro movies, which I will make sure I switch to, to short mode after I'm done. Because I think even when you're on short mode, the first time you do it, you'll still get the extended version. But then any subsequent attempts will be, uh, will be shortened. I won't be summoning too much anyway. Alright, so... Um, as you can see, that the HP is slightly higher than, uh, than the characters, but not by too much and it knows the basic uh, level 1 black magic stuff. Um, Sonic Wings is a weaker attack, but it's a quicker attack. Remember that attack rank stuff that I mentioned, and it has a de slight delaying effect as well. So it's, uh, it's a nice attack. So if the, enemy's, uh, if the enemy's susceptible to delay, then it will help. So it managed to get me a free turn there, but obviously this time it's only going to show up in two turns time. But um, Valifor's magic is uh, better than its than its attack, so you'll do more magic. You'll do more damage using magic. Um, Aeons have very powerful overdrives, and you can use these two abilities here: take less damage, overdrive gauge won't charge; take more damage, overdrive gauge charges faster. So that's another important thing, because I mean, early on there might be times where in boss battles you really are stuck with the characters, and you might want to summon your your Aeons and uh, unleash an overdrive to help you get some extra damage. Or to get overkills actually. It's a, it's a nice easy way to get overkills on bosses as well, in general. But as you can see, I mean, they're not really kind of... They're not that overpowered. I mean, it only had 24 MP. I mean, that's not, that's not very much at all. So, you know, they're good, but not incredible. I just want him to uh, attack me enough that I get a full overdrive so that I can make use of it for the next boss battle. 
Almost there. Yeah, Sonic Boom can go... Um, Sonic Wings can go critical as well, so... Can double up his damage. And down it goes. But of course it's uh, important to note that Valifor has no way of uh, healing itself, so you do need to be careful. And that's one of the annoying things about Aeons. So they have done some things in order to, to balance them out. So no healing for Valivor. So don't get too carried away. Another save sphere down there. Once again, inaccessible. And another tutorial battle. Another one of those. No problem. Leave this one to me, huh? Say good night, birdie. Okay, so Darkness, as the name would suggest, means that it can no longer make its attacks connect. So any physical attacks are going to miss, which is highly useful for a fairly, you know, at this stage, fairly strong fiend. And as you can see, the Lulu's magic attacks and Valifor's magic attacks do very similar amounts of damage, so it kind of puts it into perspective. And Waka's um, Dark Attack will inflict Darkness for three turns. So that's uh, it's fairly useful. But it doesn't. It, I don't think it's a hundred. It's not a hundred percent connection rate. I think it's like fifty percent or something like that. So because it's difficult to remember all of these figures, but it's just uh, suffice to say that it's not. It's not guaranteed. Tylus is making progress. Now, this is one of the most important and life-saving abilities that you can learn. Yes, absolutely critical. If you want to get through the game quickly, you know, if you're in trouble and you need to escape before your characters die, it's absolutely invaluable, that ability. If I get another encounter, I'll show you why. So let's assume here that you had an ambush situation and, your, and let's say, I don't know, two of your characters got knocked out. Now, if that happens, then um, normally your choice is to just escape like this. But this is not guaranteed. Sometimes the characters will refuse to escape and they'll stay on the battlefield. And that gives them, well, that can effectively lead them into getting killed. So while you're trying to run away, you might fail and end up dying. So you need to be very careful. But obviously with Tidus' flea ability, it's a guaranteed escape and everyone will escape together. No questions asked. So that will save your life on more than one occasion. So the only problem here that you might face when you're playing this game for the first time is that there might be certain characters that you find are more useful than others depending on your style of play. And as you notice, if, you, if a character doesn't participate in the battle, they will get no experience points. And that can lead to some characters being much more highly leveled than others. And it's, to be honest, it's not an easy task to, to keep them all at the same ability. And constantly switching them around is not really ideal. So, to be honest, after a while, it will start to be a case of you having a few of your favourite characters being more highly leveled than the rest. So, it's just one of those things. But we'll see how it goes. I'll try to keep everyone in the game for as long as I can. I love this track.
goodbye. Yep, most definitely love that track. And we're off. The pilgrimage has begun. And we're heading towards Kilika, where the next temple is, en route to Luka, where hopefully we're going to play in the Blitz tournament and find someone who knows Titus. Boo. Well, someone's in a better mood. <laughs> Certainly um, seems pretty happy at the moment. Come to think of it, I haven't told you where we're going. First to Kilika Island. Then we change boats and head for Luca. For that, though, Yuna's gotta pray at the temple. I'll be guarding. We'll be praying for the Aurochs' victory, too. So you come along, yeah? <sighs> Great plan. Hey. It is a great plan. Don't look at me. <laughs> so, yes, Yuna is a bit of a grump. Um, Yuna. Lulu is a bit of a grump, but she has her reasons. I don't know who you are or where you came from. But I tend to imagine her, you know, she's got that belt thing going on. I think she's a bit of a lady in the street, but a freak in the bed kind of girl. But I don't know, obviously. One can only imagine. Word is that summoner's got noble blood. I heard she's Lord Braska's daughter. You don't say. Lord Braska's daughter? Hmm. <laughs> what kind of a reaction was that? What a douche. You can tell from what he's wearing. Yeah, okay, whatever. So they're all flocking around the summoner. Who seems to be quite an important person. Bit of a minor celebrity. Okay, I think there was an Albed Primer. Is it on this one or the other one? Hold on. SS Leaky. I think it should be in this one. Yeah, okay. Nothing to see here. But once we head down, we're going to meet someone who we will find interesting. Because we're going to run into them quite often as we continue on. Oh, those fascinating clothes you're wearing. Yeah! Filthy, filthy. These won't sell. All me name's not a waka. Don't look like you got much money, either. I've no business with you. Out of me way! Who do you think you are? A waka the 23rd. Merchant extraordinaire! A walk of the who? Don't know me? Well, not many do. Not yet. <laughs> I think that was the best response to this uh, wise-ass guy. A walk of the who? That, that shut him down pretty quickly. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we're going to chat to him in a minute. Let's just um, 